the cells of the body in general, and immune cells particularly, rely on a great diversity of signals, very often local signals, locally acting hormones, many of which are called chemokines, and some belong to certain families, like the interleukin family. These signals help white blood cells react appropriately, control inflammation, control immune responses, control the differentiation of new immune cells from the bone marrow, etc. It has been noticed that in some infections, including SARS coronavirus 1 and MERS, which uh, are both viruses related to SARS coronavirus 2 or COVID-19. These infections are associated with a dysregulation of these signals, what as some call a cytokine storm, in which signals are produced at inappropriate and elevated levels. Although in the reporting of coronavirus, the term a cytokine storm is perhaps the most frequently used, it was originally described in 1994 as cytokine release syndrome. This syndrome is significant because while the virus is causing the infection, the severe adverse health effects which can cause patients to require intensive care units or even result in death. These seem uh, typically to be tied to this cytokine storm directly and not directly to viral infection. As is evident in these two videos, there is a diversity of these signaling molecules which are at abnormally high levels first in coronavirus patients uh, compared to healthy uh, individuals, and then also in coronavirus patients who require intensive care as opposed to coronavirus patients who have a more mild uh, form of the disease and do not require ICU care. So this cytokine storm seems to be a major predicting factor in the severity of coronavirus symptoms. The abnormal production of signaling molecules all throughout the body explains the multi-system response to coronavirus, which can cause flu-like symptoms in mild cases, but be life-threatening in more severe cases. The cytokine storm can cause the following, headache, dizziness, confusion, tremor, hypoxia, pulmonary edema, rapid and shallow breathing, changes in liver enzyme production, an increase in the size of the gallbladder, diarrhea, blood in the stool, abdominal pain, a rapid irregular heart rate, cardiomyopathy, possible heart failure in extreme cases, an enlarged spleen, abnormal kidney filtration, renal failure, nausea, vomiting, fever, and fatigue. Once again, these are more a direct response to the cytokine storm than to the viral infection. 